episode nine of Songs for the Struggling Artist, the podcast. My name is Emily. I don't know if I've ever said that before in the podcast, but my name's Emily, and I'm doing this here Songs for the Struggling Artist podcast. Um, so normally, I'll do a little chat here at the beginning, normally. Like, this is the ninth one, so yeah, but the, the, for the previous eight... We have chatted a bit here at the beginning, we being the royal we, me, by myself, talking to my microphone in my Mac, um, and then I'll read to you a little blog that I wrote over on my blog, Songs for the Struggling Artist. You can read that at artiststruggle.wordpress.com if you feel like reading. Then I've been chatting, but last time I played a little song at the end, and I'm going to do that again this time because of the the roots and the origins of the blog being originally an idea about being able to put some songs out into the world. So if you're into hearing a little bit of music, stick around or fast forward to the end of the podcast and you will get a song. Um, so, this blog is called The Best Time to Post. It's about how to get hits on the internet, so getting views. One of the things that's funny about blogging is that you have, you know, evidence for how many people have been looking at what you write. It's very strange, but it's wild because, you know, I can see when there's little spikes, and usually I can be like, why are suddenly a whole bunch of people from, you know, Lithuania suddenly reading the blog? And there's some reason for it that I'll never know, but there's like a little, like there's a little burst, like I can see locations, I can see what kind of website people used to get to the blog. So like if you clicked on it from SoundCloud, which is where I'll post this blog cast, you, I would be able to see, oh, someone came to the blog from SoundCloud. Um, so I have a wealth of information, which is both incredibly fascinating and incredibly distracting from the business of actually trying to make things. Um, but fun. So, so I wrote this blog about um, the best time to post because one of the things is that I, I you know, I don't do a lot of self-promotion. I'm, uh, I'm an introvert. Surprise! which is why talking to myself is actually not such a bad situation. Um, but, uh, but as an introvert, I, I don't like to make a lot of like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. So, so you know, but I have to do a little of it. I live in 2016, and um, we all are self-promoters now with Facebook and Twitter and any numbers of things that we have to promote. Um, so, yeah, so I don't, do a lot of it, like I post automatically to Twitter, and then I post on Facebook kind of strategically. Uh, but this post is about what a kind of myth that strategy <laughs> is. Um, anyway, so if you're wondering what the best time to post something on Facebook is to get some response or to get a lot of likes or to get a lot of views on your whatever, uh, this post will answer those questions for you. So, here we are, the best time to post. My blog generally gets about four or five views right out of the gate when I post on WordPress, which simultaneously posts to Twitter. Night or day, it's about the same. Those views go up when I post that blog to Facebook. That's where I usually get between 25 to 50 views, which is where I generally max out on a post. These numbers are actually bigger than they appear. WordPress doesn't count views that happen in people's emails or RSS feeds, for example. So I looked up when the best time to post was, and believe you me, in this age when everyone is promoting something via social media, there are dozens of articles on this topic. The consensus was that the best time to post was generally Thursday and Friday after lunch. The reason was that views spiked then because people were more inclined to mess around on the internet as the week winds down. The idea here being that you're reaching people in their offices at an attention-vulnerable moment. 
I tried posting at those times and it made absolutely no difference. I've also tried posting blogs I wasn't so sure I wanted to promote at non-optimal times and saw my views rise slightly. The analysis of optimal times is clearly bananas, but perhaps only bananas when it comes to my posting. These analyses are clearly predicated on an assumption of some things. Number one, it assumes your readers are in an office at work, nine to five. And number two, it assumes your readers are in the same country, and not even just the same country, but the same time zone as well. And probably for some businesses, this may be accurate. But for people who live freelance lives and talk about things of international interest to people around the world, well, it's always after lunch somewhere, sometime. And those of us who live a freelance life, we are just as likely to be working, or avoiding work, at 11 p.m. as we are at 2 p.m. I'm coming to the conclusion that there is no real optimum time to post, and only a handful of non-optimum times. Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, maybe even Saturday night. Skip Saturdays in general, unless it's raining all over the world. I'm not a great promoter of myself. Posting a blog over on Facebook is about the extent of what I'm willing to do self-promotion wise, so I want to do it when it will hit. But I've realized that it's a little like throwing a stick in a river. You can't really control where it will go. It might get hung up on a rock and never go anywhere, or it could get caught in a current and speed far away from you. Unless it's a sunny Saturday and then it's pretty good odds it's going nowhere. That is the blog. Now you know all the facts. <laughs> uh, so this song I'm going to tack on here at the end was a piece that I wrote for um, a play I made called Mytholaneous. This was the final song for the show. Um, it was really when I first got my hands on GarageBand. So it is heavily GarageBandy. It's like, ooh. There's bass lines and drum lines and strings and everything. So if you're a garage band maniac, you will probably catch a lot of the loops. Um, but it was super fun to be able to experiment and, and push my own boundaries. I was pretty much just a folky playing on my sweet acoustic guitar kind of gal before I got my hands on garage band. So, um, this song was one of the, one of the, just one of the first experiments in, in being able to play with, with loops and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so if you saw Mytholaneous, you're one of the few lovely people who did, and thank you for coming, uh, and this will be familiar. If you did not, then enjoy the finale. Thank you.